welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to have you all here once again. I am your host here, Nick Face. It's good to see you here. We have Tom Smith joining us as well on this program, and Phil Healy is around. He's around. Yeah, he's around. He's, he's there. He'll he's jump disappeared in he for the moment. He can jump in and whenever he would like to. But I like the, I like that background. What? Speaking what in. happened? I'm here. I swear. There he is. I'm here. <laughs> Phil is here. He was just introducing us. Yeah. He's the ghost of Phil Healy. So anyways, <laughs> um, I would like to talk about on this episode, obviously, the death of the Celtics 2020 or 2019-2020 season. I would like to talk about the Stanley Cup finals. And I would like to talk about whether people are buying into Cam Newton. So I would like to first start with the disgraceful, sad, and pathetic Boston Celtics who are about to be eliminated from the Eastern Conference Finals. And some people may say, Nick, get off your high horse. They got to the Eastern Conference Finals. But you know what? It's not acceptable. It is not effing acceptable to see the performance day in and day out on this court led by this Muppet of a coach, Brad Stevens, who has no clue how to lead and win in the playoffs. I am done with Brad Stevens. Tom? Um, I mean, I don't really watch basketball, but I talk to a lot of people that do. And, um, yeah, I heard they haven't been playing well at all. They're down 3-1 in the series. Um, it, you know, it's hard as it is to come back being down 3-1. to one, But if you're playing the way you're playing, there's – I mean – there's no way they will. <clears throat> they got Gordon Hayward back on game three. They were able to get the victory there, but Gordon Hayward really didn't do much impactful. You know, he was there. Um, but the game of game four, yes, the Celtics only lost by two baskets, but it was undisciplined basketball. Once again, the Celtics do not drive to the basket ba basketball hoop. They sit back and say a prayer on these freaking three-pointers, which hardly go in. And then they also go to the line and they miss all these free throws. It's, it, it's basketball 101. Fundamental basketball is what is lacking on this team and is what is going to be, sadly, the death of them. If you can't uh, I mean, have – if you don't – if you are not fundamentally sound when you are in a big stage, and this is one of Brad Stevens' biggest downfalls, you are not going to win. Was Miami's performance the other night in game four, were they setting the world on fire? No, but they were doing things that set up better basketball plays. They weren't having 19 turnovers in the second half. They're driving to the basketball hoop. They're getting a big performance from Tyler Hero. I want to talk about Tyler Hero. I don't know if you know of the name or seen him at all, Tom, but he's single-handedly been the killer of the Celtics. He is somebody that was drafted number 13 in the draft last year, and the Celtics had the 14th overall pick at Romeo Langford. What the hell is Romeo Langford doing? D d nothing. Nothing at all. But here's another classic case of the Celtics overvaluing their picks. Okay? Could there have been a way for the Celtics to have gotten Wait a minute. Here? If they had the If they had the 14th, they couldn't have gotten him. because They couldn't have. That is true. That is yeah, what do you, then That's I don't understand what you're getting at right now. So what I'm getting at is the fact that Danny Ainge... Any, all right, I'll go back to feeding the other baby. <laughs> <laughs> I understand he was number, no, we're, 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 number 13 and number 14. I know that Tyler Hero was not on, not on the potential chart to draft then because the heat just took them. To my point, what I was trying to reiterate was I wanted the Celtics to make some sort of a move to get Tyler Hero some potential way instead of taking Romeo Langford. When you see a 13 and you see your 14 pick who is sitting on the bench, picking his nose, doing nothing. I have a problem with that. I have a big problem with that. So that right there is once again looking at how the Celtics overvalue these lovely assets that they like to call themselves, more like asses in a sense. Um, that's your that's your struggle. That's your struggle. I mean, it, it sounds like. What's your take? 
What's your take, Tom? Well, I mean, from what you're saying, it sounds like they're just, you know, throwing their hand in a bag and picking a name out and just, you know, being like, all right, well, you're on the team now, but we're gonna we're not going to play you. You know, they're, 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 be, they're, ba they're like basically just picking a name out of a hat, really, is what it sounds like. Well, I don't want to pick a name out of a hat right now. I want to put people on the chopping block. And I would like to figure out who maybe number one, two, three should be on the chopping block right now. So if you were to be uh, a guesser of who that would be, who would you put on number one? Who's number one? Slice their fingers. <laughs> from the uh, – It's a little from, harsh, but – from the entire team, from the entire staff and team and everything, players? Whoever. Who do you want? Uh, Brad Stevens. Okay. He's high on my list. Absolutely. And guess what? He is number one. Number one on my list is Stevens. Stevens is a lame duck coach. He's boring. He's unmotivating. He is horrible when it comes to playoff basketball getting a win. Okay. Now it's like 34 and 33 in his career. It, unacceptable. With, I don't care if Tatum's 21, 22, 23. You have the talent to get to the next stage. Okay, this is not the, the Miami Heat. Let me go sit on the beach and not worry about my team. This is Boston, okay? We value and care about our teams very much. And when we and I see piss poor performances and unacceptable getting things together and having a game plan. There is no game plan with Stevens. It's sit at the freaking three line and say a miracle three to go in. I'm so sick of it. And as a fan, that's me watching. And I could give a hill of beans about basketball. I could give a hill of beans. I am not the biggest basketball fan in the least bit. But I can be critical as a broadcaster and a fan from analyzing what I see. And from what I see is not up to the standard of how to win when it matters. Game three, love the game plan. The reason they won in game three was because they drove to the hoop. They didn't sit at the three and say a freaking prayer. Oh, is it going to go in? No. They drove to the hoop, got the job done, and got the win. Why, why change? Why change? Why? Why wasn't the same game plan for game four? That game last night was your season, and your season is done. If they come back and win three games in a row, I will retire from my professional career of broadcasting. I will step aside, and I will, <laughs> I will go away forever. Promise right. you. I will go right. away. I will say, you know what? I'll throw the flag. But if that happens – there's no way of that happening in the first place. But number two, if that happens, <laughs> that's it. You're done. You don't have to see. You don't have to see my sorry face any any anymore on these shows. So I'll let Todd take over. Anyways, um, anything else on basketball? No, <laughs> I, I'm done with basketball. See you later. All right, let's. Up oh, here he comes. Oh, oh, oh. Still has something to say. And he just he just said I'm fired. So no. <laughs> I want to transition next into the Stanley Cup. I know that's Tom's uh, bread and butter right there. And I want to personally ask what your thoughts are so far on the Tampa and Dallas series. Um, well, it's not going the way I thought it was going to go. But the, my favorite thing about this game, these games is you know who's going to win the game by the end of the first period. Who is ahead? Pretend I'm dumb and or our audience is dumb. No, no, I don't mean dumb, excuse me. Is not up to speed with who is. You got to be very careful in this world now. If you're not up to speed, we got to make sure everybody everybody is very sensitive with things. What is the series at right now? So, Dallas won the first game and then Tampa has won the last 3 games. So, Tampa is up 3 to 1 and they have a right. chance to win it all tomorrow night. So it's very similar to how the Celtics series is right now, except that's the Stanley Cup. And this is the, you know, NBA Eastern Conference Finals. But yeah. um, your overall thoughts are Tampa's going to win, I'm assuming? Yeah, at this point, I mean, it depends on how tomorrow, if tomorrow night goes. Uh, if Dallas wins tomorrow, they could have a chance to force a game seven. Obviously. How, li how likely is that in an NHL format? Um... Who was the last team, or if you can remember, the last team that was maybe down 3-1 and coming back and winning? I can't think of it off the top of my head. 
Um, well, the last team that I can remember off the top of my head to be down three games to none in a series and come back and win was um, the Flyers ask, back in two. Was the Flyers back in two thousand and ten against the Bruins? Let's that's see if Tom time. is right. That's I have Siri. I remember. Siri is our guest star today. I'm going to ask Siri. When was the last time a team in the NHL was down three games to one to come back and win a series? The Lightning were victorious over the Stars by a score of... Oh, that's not what I want. You're fired. <laughs> ne never again. Never again. Banned. Banned. Ask that's a simple question I like that, and that's... So they told me five to two was the win, so... That was last night from everything. Yeah, so was I wasn't looking for that. I was looking for – that could be our trivia question for the next time. We'll have to do our homework there. Um, That's one of the ones the last I remember. series. I'm pretty Flyers sure, I'm might pretty be sure it. I'm pretty sure there's one more after that one, but that's the last one I can remember. Obviously, the one that I, I always I always think about is obviously the Red Sox being down three games to O, and that was in 2004. And I think they were down three games to one, 2007. They came back and won in the um, – in the uh, AL, ALCS, the championship yeah. series. So, obviously, 3-0, that was 2004. They came back and won four in a row against the Yankees. Um, but those, those are slim pickings. They do not happen all the time. They're very, very rare. Um, I would like to transition next, if it's cool with you guys, into talking about the Patriots because I was on the edge of my seat with two seconds to go in Sunday night's Thriller. Uh, against the lovely Seattle Seahawks. So let's talk about that game, the positives, the negatives, the things to look forward to. And are you a believer, not in the monkeys, are you a believer in Cam Newton? We have to figure that out too. Well, I believe in both the monkeys and Cam Newton. <laughs> well, go eat your bananas. Yeah, um, yeah, well, I mean, how can you not? Most of them are dead, but I still believe in them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can do. Yeah, that's um, true. I, I agree. I agree with Phil as well. Um, one negative, one negative from that game though was uh, the Patriots pulled the Pete Carroll, 2016 Super Bowl they, Pete Carroll. They really did. I think it was worse. I think it was worse to tell you the truth. I really do. Oh yeah, I agree. Now, did you first when you when you when Edelman caught that pass? It was like 25 seconds ago. I forget what I was like. Oh, they got. They should call a timeout right now. And I'm like, oh, are they waiting just not to give any time on the other end? But I'm like, eh, it shouldn't matter, right? I mean, they, they, they should have probably called the timeout there. But at the same time, they, they didn't really line up the, the play uh, well enough to disguise the run. Because, I mean, they, they really stacked up that goal line and didn't, you know, draw anybody and any of the defenders away from the idea that it was going to be, a, you know, a run. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, they made a couple mistakes I, there. but I personally was shocked that the game ended up being that close. I was shocked that they were able to come back and potentially, honestly, truthfully, they should have won the game. Yeah, they, they really down. should have. They, they, really should have. Should have like, they were down by 12, was it, with like three minutes to go? Was that what it was? Yep. And they yeah. just marched yep. down the field. It was crazy. Yep. I was like. Yep. And remember, we missed a two-point conversion and we missed the field goal. That's so right. So those are other things that if you potentially have those. It would have been a tie game. It would have been, been a tie, tie game, game if, we didn't yeah. score, if, if we didn't end up scoring that last second touchdown. Anyway. Correct. 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 Yeah. I want to look at the positives first, and then we'll talk about the negatives. I think the major positive here, and it's not just with Cam Newton, it's the Patriots' offense in general. The Patriots' offense right now <laughs> is better. There's Tom. Did we lose you for a second? Yeah, my iPad wasn't charging, so it went, the battery was low. So it, you know. oh, Okay. I was just saying that I think the Patriots' offense right now is better than last season's with Brady. What do you think? I agree. And, I mean, we, we looked – it looked pretty good even without James White. Yeah. Which was surprising, which was really surprising because James White is a pretty key component of that offense. I just want to make sure, too, that we offer our condolences out to James White, who had a yep. horrendous day. Um, his father was killed in a automobile accident on, I think it was Sunday afternoon. And Sa his mother Saturday. Was in 
Saturday, Saturday. and his, his mother was in critical condition too. I don't know the status of her condition or anything like that, but uh, 2020, 2020. 2020. No, it's pretty horrible. Yeah. But uh, to Russell Wilson's credit, he did in his uh, postgame speech, which I am a Very big classy. And yeah, no, I like Russell Wilson. I, like I don't him. mind him. Yep. Yeah, I'm not a... <laughs> You're like, oh, I don't know. like I am predisposed to hate him, but I <laughs> uh, no, no I, I don't have anything to hate on him. Yeah. No, no. He's, a great, he's a great quarterback, and he seems like uh, I don't know. He seems like he's got like this fire. Like, he's just, I like him a lot better than Mahomes. I like him a lot better. Why? Why is that? Because Mahomes, ma- ma- he's because a cocky, Wilson... arrogant son yeah. of a. You know what? Wilson is cocky, though, but he just no, he, he's not. he hides I it don't better. Think so. I, he hides it better. I, there, Phil, I, th- I think Russell Wil- Russell Wilson has a lot more professionalism when it comes to. Him. I, th- I, I think, think there, he's much more. Yeah. Phil, there's a difference I, I think he, between on, Russell Tom. Wilson. What, what, there's a difference between Russell Wilson cockiness and Lamar Jackson and uh, Patrick Mahomes uh, cockiness. Oh no, I I, I don't disagree. Um, yeah, it all depends. I mean, if we had Patrick Mahomes, I guess we'd be singing a different tune. But uh, who knows? Of course we would. Of course we would. But but also, who knows if he would be like that under you know, under. Uh, I don't think he'd be able to play on the. I don't think he'd be able to make it on the team. I don't think he'd last. Oh really? I I don't think that he'd be able. That is a bold statement. That is a bold statement. I I just don't think he'd be able to handle uh, Bill Belichick. Possibly, he might be too restricting. He's, no. he's a. Some he's people a, didn't think he's a tough yeah, coach. That's what he thinks still. He agrees. Yeah. Some people, some people wouldn't have thought that Cam Newton would be be a good player under Belichick's system. Well, well, you're it, wrong. I think, I think at a different time, I think at a different time, I think he would have had a hard time. I think, I think this season he's trying, he's trying to prove something, so he's willing to do whatever it takes. Improving, improving a lot of things. I have been very, very much impressed with. Cam Newton so far. It's been two games. I get it. It's early. We see he's healthy. We see he's motivated. We see the offense has bought in. Same with Cam with leading this team. I think you have a happier Patriots team right now. I think I think we would have won by at least two touchdowns if James White was playing. That's what I think. Potentially. 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 The running game was not very good. That was a negative. The defense was mediocre. I would actually give the defense probably a D and it's going to be tough without players that you haven't replaced and are out from the COVID restrictions. Dante Hightower is a huge loss on this team right now. I think also your secondary Gilmore had a horrendous game. Horrendous. Yep. He got absolutely torched by, uh, was it TJ something? Big guy um, for Seattle. What's his name? Medcalf. their receivers Medcalf, TK Medcalf. That's what it was. Torched, lit up, lit up. New, couldn't couldn't get anything uh, away from him, and that was a big problem. Uh, the running game was very very much a big factor in the game. There was well, no performance of Sonny Michelle. Rex Burkhead was next to nothing. Well, Damian Bur- Harris didn't did even Burkhead really play. Even, did Burkhead even have play one drive, one snap? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he played a little bit. He they used him more as the James White pass back, which you can't do because that's not his position. No. Nope. Um, so like, a, Sonny, like I Sonny said, Michelle is a big problem. Sonny Michelle is a big problem. He I mean, is. He had a, it was, he's it nothing. Was, no. I mean, he had a couple big runs, but I mean, not not to the extent that we saw when he first started. So my biggest thing here moving forward is you need to continue to keep Cam healthy. This team is totally, totally dictated off of how well and how healthy Cam Newton is going to do. So you got to keep him healthy. The next opponent that the Patriots will be playing will be Sunday afternoon against the Raiders. That game will be at Foxborough. No fans. Sorry. The Las Vegas Raiders, not the Oakland Raiders. The Las Vegas Raiders. That is correct. So no fans. The lovely state continues to baby us. Well, that's another. That's another case. Yeah, we won't get into that. That's- zero point zero 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 one people, but it is what it is. And I have my stance on it, and you can all have yours too. I'm just he- glad I'm healthy. Um, but that's a game that I'm going to be looking forward to, and I absolutely am expecting a win. If we do not get a win, I'm going to be very disappointed. We should be two and one after Sunday afternoon. Yeah. No. I, after I that. Like- I feel like after the, the these last two games, I, I feel like we're gonna have a decent. I feel like we're gonna have a decent season. 
Uh, after that, you'll play Kansas City. And I think after that, we can ask Siri that one. Siri's back. Siri's back. What is the Patriots' schedule this season? Here's the upcoming schedule for the Patriots. So here's Sunday the dates. And January 3rd, 2021. We have the Chiefs on October 4th. That will be a 425 game. Then we play the Broncos. Then we play the – and we have a bye. We have a bye. We play the 49ers. That will be a tough game. That will be well, at uh, – that, no, that will be home. Be, Garoppolo comes home. That, that could be a tough game depending on whether or not – Jimmy plays. They, they come back. Um, the guys that got hurt are back. Yeah, they got a, we had a lot of injuries this past week in the NFL. Then we play the Bills on November 1st. That's at Buffalo, at the Jets. Uh, we, got the, we have the Ravens on the 15th. That'll be a tough game. The Texans on the 22nd. That is right before, I think, Thanksgiving. Then we play the Cardinals. They're um, more improved, I will say. Then we have the Chargers, the Rams on December 10th. The Dolphins, the Bills, and the Jets, we will close things out with. So it's a tough schedule, folks. It's tough. You got to stay healthy. And I still expect the Patriots to make the playoffs. Yeah, I, I fully expect them to make the playoffs as well. Um, I, I think the Red Sox, the Red Sox. I disagree with everything that's been said. Yeah, you know what? No. <laughs> The Red Sox will be uh, finishing off their season, thank God, on Sunday. <laughs> hey, listen, the and Yankees lost 14-1 to last night. Let's applaud oh. for that. Um, if anybody wants to have a party, you can go to Tom's house. I will not be there. <laughs> but honestly, like, can we back it up? Who? Uh, the Red Sox. Red Sox. Yeah, I don't know that team. Does not ring a bell or play a few. The flute. Orange Sox. Yeah, the yeah. Orange Sox. Uh, uh, so their season, their season and Sunday, they will finish their final game this week. I think it's on a Thursday night at Fenway. And then the weekend series, they'll finish off in Atlanta against a very good Braves team. Lose every game. Tank for uh, the guy that we want is uh, Al Leiter's son. That's the guy. He's supposed to be number one, big left-handed pitcher. Tank, tank, tank. Lose, lose, lose. Keep on losing. Any other final things before we wrap it up here? I do want to do, um, for sports rather, I want to do our uh, topic that has nothing to do with sports to finish off for today. Go for it. Uh, Tom, did you have anything? Or is it all on me again? It's all on you. I, I, all on me again. All, all on you. me again. Oh, wait. we're so, all right. Go for it, yeah. I have to actually think because I actually didn't really have something. So now I'm going to have to think right now to figure out what I'm going to talk about. I always so, forget. I always forget. Yeah, I always forget. So the topic that has nothing to do we can with say anything. anything. I mean, it doesn't did matter. We already, did we already talk about my rant with um, the Dancing with the Stars? Yeah. Okay. So yes, we're not going to do that. I think we talked we about that last that week. Again. No, we don't. We, we talked about that last anyway. week. It's not bizarre. We talked about, we talked the about supermarket sweep with the new thing coming. We, we talked about all that. The are kind of changing. It's fall here. It's, it is uh, fall. It's, it doesn't um, feel like fall. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like it. No. It doesn't feel like it at all. It two days ago. Yes. But, uh, yeah, we're not, uh, I think, I don't know. I have no idea. I think it'll be, uh, I think it'll be nice uh, in the next couple, uh, oh, what am I doing? I'm muting by accident here. Hi, oh, muted Nick. Let's go. I mean, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to unmute. Our own show now, the Phil and Tom show. See you later, Nick. <laughs> Nick, try to unmute yourself. Hold on. <laughs> I'm legit trying to unmute him. It's not happening. Nick, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, unmute yourself. Oh, man. oh now I'm back. <laughs> there you go. I was trying that to. Was the, that was the longest I've ever shut up in my life. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. I'm, I, I'm topicless right now. So um, I, top, yeah, I mean, it's not oh. topless. Not talk about fall. Yeah, talk about look at fall. that. Well, let's let's talk about that nice logo behind Phil right there. Oh, that that's, is a beautiful a logo, logo that was done by Jason, right from Norcam. It was Jason Smith. Jason Smith, uh, the government access coordinator for Norcam, created this brand. Did a heck of a logo. job. 
it's absolutely it's, beautiful. It really and is. And if beautiful. you notice, there's all the, the sports, the home, the home sports play, um, stadiums, arenas, whatever you want to call they them. They are right inside of those, that logo. Yeah, it is one of the, I actually think that I, I want a t-shirt or a sweatshirt that made out of that logo. Cause it really is. It's very classy. It's very, oh, it's very good. nice. He always does yeah. a great job. He's a great graphics yeah. guy. Yeah. So, well, I don't have anything else to say. I am speechless on the Celtics. I really don't have anything else that really we need to discuss yeah. here. So I think it's time for us to say bye-bye to all of you here in our lovely virtual land. And we will see you again next time for another fun-filled, exciting, thrilling episode oh, of we didn't Face get a the rant Facts. Today, though. Dang. See you later, everybody. <laughs> Bye.